Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I rise in opposition of this conference report. Um, sadly, uh, this is not the bipartisan support uh, bill that we would like to see, uh, one that uh, we were working on compromise. This is not it. And in reality, I think this is more dangerous than doing nothing, Madam Speaker. While it does create a gross misdemeanor, not the gross misdemeanor most would think of, uh, in most cases where there's a deferred prosecution or diversion, uh, someone who is alleged to commit a crime stipulates. This is a case where none of that ever happens. Uh, an individual can uh, play gamesmanship with the system, wait it out until witnesses and, and evidence is stale, and sadly uh, continue to go through the cycle of the judicial process. What's even more troubling, Madam Speaker, is the fact that the state is going to, in this policy, preempt local governments from uh, passing local restrictions on paraphernalia. Therefore, Madam Speaker, uh, there could be uh, an organization uh, sanctioned by the state coming into my neighborhood, next to my school, to pass out syringes, smoking devices, and so many other uh, dangerous items that perpetuates the drug abuse, perpetuates this cycle that we're trying to stop. That's what this policy does. It establishes health engagement hubs that are affiliated with syringe service programs that allow for minors to be there, unattended minors. There's no restriction. This isn't about best practice. This is not the best practice. This is not evidence-based. And this is not data-driven to allow minors to be in these hubs around needle exchanges and drug use. In addition, it creates recovery residences that allow for people who are currently using to be in the same room, maybe in a bed next to someone who's trying to recover. That's not best practices. That's not evidence-based. That's not based on the data to allow someone who's trying to get their life cleaned and straight next to someone who's continuing to use. This policy also removes the requirement to notify a local government when you're citing a treatment facility of this type in the community. This takes away all local control. It doesn't share the values of me, my community, or the state of Washington, and I'd ask for a no vote. I rise today to urge you to vote no with a heavy heart. Madam Speaker, you and I have talked before about uh, my great desire to help those with mental health and substance abuse disorders. Madam Speaker, I fear that this, isn't, this bill is not the right vehicle to do that. Madam Speaker, I am concerned that this bill, as written, does not learn the lessons of the 20 to 30 years of phenomenal drug courts and substance abuse courts that are currently operating in the state. What I mean by that, Madam Speaker, is that oftentimes in a deferred prosecution or in a stipulated order of continuance, it is critically important that the individual take responsibility, even if a written form, to say, I have a problem, Madam Speaker. We saw that yesterday or two days ago, this body voted off the floor by nearly a unanimous vote, the deferred prosecution, to give two opportunities to those with alcohol and substance abuse treatment a problem. But as part of that, they are required to admit they have a problem. Madam Speaker, the problem with the diversion, in, in, in my view, of having worked in the drug courts for nearly 10 years, is that it doesn't require that type of ownership of responsibility. It's important because oftentimes when I talk to folks, they tell, can tell me exactly how many days they've been sober, Madam Speaker. And I think that the ownership of the problem is part of the solution. I want these people to get better. I want these people to get treated. But Madam Speaker, not requiring them to acknowledge they have a problem is not the right path to go. There's another problem with this bill, Madam Speaker, and that is for a very small segment of the population, as much as it pains me to admit this, they do not want treatment. They simply don't. I wish they did, Madam Speaker. 
um, that is the hardest target audience, if you will, to get to. But they don't, they refuse to acknowledge they have a problem and don't want the help. Madam Speaker, at some point for the safety of community, they have to go to jail. And I'm concerned that this bill doesn't do that. Even under the deferred prosecution that we passed several days ago by nearly a unanimous vote, they would still go to jail. Unfortunately, those safeguards are not in this bill. I urge a no vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Madam Speaker. Um, I think what the uh, important part that you're hearing on both sides, um, which is all together, is that we care. We care. And we're scared. We're scared for our kids. We're scared for the future. And we want something to fix it. We all want something to fix it. Every single one of us. Madam Speaker, I am here to say I voted for the last Blake fix. I am willing to do everything I can to fix it. But I have to make a vote for my constituency. And unfortunately, a lot of these uh, points in the policy at hand that we are voting on won't be available. Maybe a decade. The funding mechanism, I asked when it was briefed, is it a billion dollars? What are we looking at? What are we looking for housing? I can't even get houses for teachers and doctors to come into my district. Is Where do we put them? How do they get help? I support drug courts. I support therapeutic courts. We have those in my district. What do I do with um, you know, mixed housing and health hubs and, and preemption for uh, paraphernalia? I understand the framework, but where is it? Where is it for my people that I represent? Where is it for the children that walk around and see the kids that can't go to the park anymore, that can't go play basketball, and they tell me because it's too dangerous? Madam Speaker, what about those kids? I want to support something that talks about how to help the people of all of Washington, but this doesn't do it. There is not enough support in these other locations in the state of Washington to help those people. Madam Speaker, this isn't equity. It isn't. There's no houses, there's no, there's no way to reach them. And then to tell local governments, maybe we'll come in with safe injection sites, maybe we'll come in with paraphernalia exchanges, maybe we'll come. The people in my district are asking for help and we're telling them we know better than you. You know, Madam Speaker, I don't, I don't agree with incarceration, I don't agree with felonies, but incarcerated people are alive, Madam Speaker. And if we can get them help in the system we have now through drug court, they will be alive for tomorrow. And some of those are about to be our children in the next generation, Madam Speaker. We need a program that fits all of Washington. All of Washington. Not the wealthy districts, not the setup, not the, the grant programs that are set up in our funding mechanism, but all of Washington should have equal access to, to becoming. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Please vote no. Madam Speaker, you should vote no because the policies, the patchwork of confused, well-intended, but ultimately flawed policies in this bill extend failure that the people of Washington are living with every day. It will extend failure that looks like addicts on the sidewalks of our streets. It will extend failure that looks like dealers dealing fentanyl and methamphetamine and heroin near our schools. Madam Speaker, in my district, we've experimented with many of the proposed policies in this bill. We've tried the kind of hub housing, the kind of sheltering described in this bill. It failed. Madam Speaker, it drew active users to sleep next to people struggling to get clean. It drew dealers into state-subsidized housing. 
The number of needles in our parks increased. The number of crack pipes on the sidewalks became a scourge. We were able to rectify some of this damage, Madam Speaker, by counting on local ordinances and local action to clean up our streets and strike down on these failed policies. Madam Speaker, we have a drug crisis in this state, but it is not our civil society's response to the unlawful behavior that's the crisis. Madam Speaker, it is the use of the drugs themselves. That's the crisis. Criminalization in our legal system is simply a tool or a set of tools to try to remedy the problem. But the problem is one of individual agency. And what our system can do when it works is help an individual person do better in their lives. Madam Speaker, law enforcement in my communities have asked for a policy with teeth that will really get sick people better, will really get addicts on a better path. This policy does not do that, Madam Speaker. Please vote no. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And unfortunately, I'll also be a no on this bill. I had hoped to vote yes on this Blake as earlier. Madam Speaker, the drug crisis in Washington State is heartbreaking. And this has to do with our friends, our family, constituents. This isn't another country, this isn't another place. This is our state, our nation, and our loved ones who are suffering. We've heard many stories tonight to that effect. We're not created in order to live our lives in suffering, not being depressed, not being defeated, guilty, condemned, or simply unworthy. What I've learned through this process mostly is that many of those suffering from addiction, they don't feel like they're worthy enough for recovery. And this bill doesn't help with that, in my opinion, with my vote. We hear from them over and over the stories that, that we, we need to reach out, we need to be there for them, and we've heard from those that protect us in our communities, from law enforcement, from prosecutors, that it doesn't get us here. And I would argue after reading this bill over and over and over that it actually sets many people suffering from addiction on the path of failure, which would again make them feel more unworthy. I asked for a no vote today, and I feel like in the state of Washington and across the nation, this has to be our number one priority. People are dying in the street. We are in what I call a state of emergency, but we need to give them something that works. If the state of Washington can't give meaningful help, then I vote no and ask the local government to take control.